the new Ford Bronco. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Bill with Exos Jeeps, and we build badass Jeeps and some other off-road vehicles. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Ford Bronco coming out, everybody's excited, but you know what? There's a lot of information involved in these, so I'm gonna try and break it down, what I think I like about it, what I hate about it, and what you really need to know about it. Because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Are we gonna buy one? Are we gonna build one? Whatever. For the first time since 1996, Ford is gonna produce a Bronco again. There's a lot of hate on it online, uh, particularly in the, in the Jeep clubs. Well, I say there's a lot of hate. There's also a lot of love for it too, which is probably creating more hate than the Bronco itself. Talking about how they're gonna buy one in addition to their Wrangler. For whatever reason, that triggers a lot of people and you know, I don't get it because personally, I'm in love with this thing. I think it's gonna be awesome for a lot of reasons and I'm gonna cover that in a minute, but it looks cool and I don't understand why some people are hating on this thing in the way it looks because personally, I think it looks great. I think it identifies a lot with the most beloved models. That was the 60s and 70s, not the very late 70s model Bronco, but those were just awesome, very coveted. Guys are always buying those and trying to build them up and, and crawl them or just restore them. And ever since Ford started talking about bringing the Bronco back, I've seen the market go way up on those older Broncos. So I really dig that Ford brought that classic look back and a lot of other things, but we'll get to that after we cover the basics of what is the new Ford Bronco. Something I don't really like about the, the Ford Bronco is there are seven different trim levels to choose from. What? And this is one of those things where I think less is more. It makes it kind of hard to decide which trim level you want when you have that many out there. They would have been better off at just like picking maybe four trim levels. Now, probably in reality, there's only six because the first edition model, that's obviously, that's not gonna be around forever. Then there's 11 colors to choose from, depending on which package you choose. If you go with the most basic model, then you really only have the very standard colors to choose from. The classic Oxford white, red, blue, black, gray, and silver. As you go up in different trim level packages, you also get other color options as well. But let's start with the most basic, and I'm gonna relate these to you, compare them a lot to the Jeep models to sort of give you some bearing on what these models relate to, or, you know, because of what you're familiar with as Jeep owners. The base model, which is literally called the base, is gonna be exactly what you would think it'd be. It's gonna be like the sport model. In fact, it's probably gonna be a little bit more advanced. It's gonna have some more features than a Jeep sport model, but the principles are the same here. It's the most easily attainable, still probably a very capable machine, but it's gonna be the cheapest one. They're gonna come in just under thirty thousand dollars i mean i would be surprised if ford sticks to that okay if it's a base model it's going to get just this you can't add any other features to it in fact i know that that's not true it would be kind of nice if they were you know because jeeps sometimes you get sports that have all kinds of features that shouldn't be in a sport but they're there anyways which just makes the trim levels whatever it's going to come with the 272 transfer case it is gonna come with standard 2.3 liter EcoBoost, standard transmission, but you can upgrade those to 2.7 and the 10 speed automatic. The next model is gonna be the Big Ben model. It's gonna be a step up, probably like a Sport S. It's gonna have a few more features in it and a couple more color options. Big Ben model is gonna go from sub 30 up to 35, almost $36,000. Then there's the Black Diamond model. You're looking at it just a little bit more than the Big Ben model. Looks like what they're calling bash plates. Something different between some of the different packages. They call it the GOAT driving modes, where the, it was that goes over all types of terrain or any type of terrain. And some trim levels have more modes than others. Looks like the Black Diamond is gonna have an extra GOAT mode on it in addition to what the base and big men models have. The next one is gonna be the Outer Banks model. Now this is where we start getting kind of more relative to the Jeeps. This is what it looks like to me compares to like a Sahara model. So it's not the most off-road capable, but it's gonna probably be the most luxurious model. So you're gonna have all your leather seats. It's looking like a 12 inch touch screen, body matched hard tops and fenders and stuff like that. So it's gonna resemble the Sahara the most. Next is gonna be the Wild Track. This dude right here is a $10,000 jump in mall from, so the Outer Banks is gonna be around 38, 39. This is going to jump you up to the $48,000, $49,000 range. So the Wild Track is actually 
the model that is going to come standard with the Sasquatch package. I'll go back to that in a minute, but it's, it's definitely going to be very off-road capable. Now the Bronco Badlands. Now this is supposed to be the most off-road capable package coming in at 42,000. Why is it less than the Wild Track? It does not come standard with the Sasquatch package. It's gonna come with a lot of cool stuff in it. Front sway bar disconnect, 17 inch beadlock capable wheels, a little bit different suspension. It adds the rock crawl mode to the goat modes. We're gonna know more about this when we can actually put our hands on one and, and take it off road and try it out but I'm definitely curious about the rock crawl mode. Last but not least is the first edition model. Well, that's gonna be a lot like, you know, the launch editions. It's gonna be super fancy. It's gonna be around 60 some thousand dollars. It's for those people that just wanna be first. If that's you, hey, awesome, bring it by. I wanna check it out. Let's go back now and talk about some of the options. Why, for instance, does the Wild Track cost more than the Bronco Badlands when the Bronco Badlands is supposed to be the most off-road capable of the different trim levels? Well, it goes back to the wild track actually has the sasquatch package standard on it whereas the bronco badlands which is supposed to be the most off road capable out the gate doesn't have the sasquatch package for most of you watching right now all you want to talk about is the sasquatch package anyways what is the sasquatch package what is a horseshoe a sasquatch investigator is looking into the matter that is the one that's going to come standard with 35 inch tires and beadlock capable wheels. Doesn't mean that they're gonna be beadlock wheels from the factory, but they're capable of being beadlock wheels. Locking front and rear diffs. It's gonna have a different suspension on it. It's gonna have some more clearance to it. It's gonna have larger fender flares, sway bar disconnect. This is the part where I think Bronco said, well, let's kind of stick it to Jeep and give Jeep owners what they wanted all along other than a V8. But here's the best part. You can take any trim level you want and add Sasquatch package to it. So if you want the base model, the cheapest of the cheaps, you wanna just immediately be able to order it, pick it up from the dealer and go hit the trails right away, then you can order the base model with the Sasquatch package. That is freaking awesome. And that's where I think Ford is gonna kill Jeep on this. Looking at the difference between the Wild Track and the Bronco, if the difference is about six or $7,000, Let's say that this Asquatch package is a $10,000 upgrade. If you buy a base model Bronco for 28 and you add the Sasquatch package, you're at $38,000. Is that comparable to a modern day Rubicon? Yeah, it is. They don't have 35 inch tires on them from the get go. Uh, well, some dealers put it on there, but you're, you're, you're gonna end up paying more than 48 for it if they did. Right there around $38,000 and you're super super capable i gotta say man i'm really in love with this thing i mean come on man they put the the side view mirrors are built into the bronco so you can take the doors off and we don't have to go buy some cheap mirrors to to screw into the hinge like we do on the jeeps and all one had to do was look at the jeep and all its fails and just build a bronco based on that the best part about this is all those guys out there hating on this is that all this is going to do is raise the level for jeep i mean they're set they, they took the bar they put it up here and now jeep's got to raise it to compete one other thing to mention about sasquatch package is three to one transfer case i think that right there is kind of a letdown they should have at least matched or beat Jeep in the four to one, but with the 10 speed automatic, maybe not. So with the 10 speed automatic, maybe that's why they didn't do it. Jeep probably should have just done away with the four to one transfer case on the Rubicons with the eight speed automatic. I think the only reason they might've kept it around was because of the manual transmissions where obviously a four to one is way better when you're off road. So I can kind of see where Ford doing the three to one makes sense with a 10 speed automatic, but you know, and a seven speed manual. I'm hoping that seven speed is because first gear is super, super low. That would be awesome because everybody knows that the manuals suck in the Jeeps. Probably gonna get some hate for that comment because I know a lot of you are purists and like that. There should be no excuse by the time these things actually hit production for there to be any issues with them. I'm sure I missed a lot. There's a lot, a lot, 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 lot going on with these trim packages. I'm just here to give you kind of what, what I think about it. With this just in, it looks like Ford is also gonna be introducing a Bronco pickup to compete with the Gladiator. The initial reports suggest that the name is gonna be the Maverick. Be on the lookout for that probably around 2024. That wraps it up for this. For more cool videos on Jeeps and off-road stuff, click here.